Hi, Joshua Cullen Cosplay, uh, also Darkness on the RPF. Um, had a little gimmick for a thousand likes on my Facebook page, and needless to say, winner wants a Destro helmet. Uh, I have built one. It's my size, fits like a glove. This one's going to be a little bit larger, uh, longer faceplate, a little bit wider, so it, it'll be easy to see, definitely easy kind of show. But um, I'm going to show you start to finish how I look at stuff. That way you get an idea for what I look at, how Pepecura works, I guess, kind of, sort of, even though there's a bunch of tutorials, I'll show you what I see. So if you have any questions, post along the way, let me know what I need to do, and you will see it. So thank you all for clicking the like button, and hopefully you learned something. Since I'm not a computer guy yet, I'm still figuring stuff out, you're going to have to stare at my screen. Um, first thing I always do is I look for images. So always do a Google search for what you're looking for. And we know we're looking for the Injustice Deathstroke, so that's what I typed in the search. Find what style you want. There was two of them that popped up, so I downloaded them to see what they look like. This is a standard version. It gives a lot of detail as far as the side of the mask. You can actually see indentions in there. Um, I didn't put those in. I, I do this for fun, do it real quick, spit out another one. Uh, this one, I kind of like this one because of the damage effect. But it's all depending on what you would like to do. Um, after I get an idea of what I'm building after, that's when I actually go to the PEP program. Um, or actually download your PEP. I have PEP Occur Designer, so whenever I'm done with stuff, I can save it as far as it. you adjust your size, you can save it, and it'll allow you to do it. PEP Occur Viewer is free. If you do it, you can adjust your size, but you won't be able to save it at that size. But needless to say, after you print it off, you don't need it anyway, it's just your model. Um, but whenever JF unfolds, he usually doesn't build it, so all the pieces are still very all over the place, and there are duplicates, so you can condense those if you would like. Um, the settings that you need to know of is your print and paper settings, and it's important that you actually look to see how you download it and what you do. So for me, I do letter. And then I have my margin set so it's really wide. Um, this print alignment marks is very important because what happens is you're going to be cutting those pieces out and taping them together. That way it's one solid piece. It actually gives it a nice cleaner look. Um, and that way it's just one flowing deal. Which you've seen the helmet so the faceplate almost looks like a solid piece because of how it's unfolded like this. Uh, the other thing is on the helmet when it was first released it came off of the game rip. So it was reversed. Uh, Pepecura actually did something. They're, they're making it for us, which is pretty cool. They actually have it to where you can mirror and flip the 3D and 2D. So it'll flip the image and it'll also flip all the pieces, which is very helpful if you're doing foam builds and you build a whole right side. You can flip it on here and actually model it and build a whole left side. So those are the settings you want to actually do to break into it. Um, of course, after I get that part, I do clean it up. I kind of arrange the pieces I want to do, um, which I didn't flip this one, but I will. Boom. So anyways, as far as the way it's set up, uh, usually there's a default scale on it. And so whenever you look at it, it's under 2D menu, change scale, scale factor and what it does is it records it in millimeters so what you want to do is whatever you measure out it's what I do is centimeters add a zero onto it there's your millimeters so if it's 330 obviously it's 33 for the height um, I used to go by this until they came out with a really great tool on here which is a point to point measuring tool which is if you right click on the 2d menu click on the measure distance between two points and then what you can do is when you go to your model you can actually measure your points so if we want a point here it's right there it'll actually give you the distance uh, for my head I got a tw it's 22 and a half 23 roughly so what I usually do is I measure for the inside um, to see how it's going to fit and that's why my helmets are so small is, and they fit like a glove because I want them to look like the game. The Giver helmet's tight but they all fit like they're supposed to. Um, if you want them bigger and you want some more breathing room of course open it up but what I usually do is measure the inside and see what sizing I need to go with before I actually change the scale. 
so that one says 19. The winner actually has, it's 19.5, but what I did was the outside of these. That way the distance on the inside is, it's, I think it's 25. So I already have this set up for him as far as his scale. Um, and all you do is you literally go under your 2D menu, change scale, and then you play with your scale factor to hit what you need. Um, some people can actually just do the increase 10%, but whenever you have a concern for what you're going to do, people are like, well, help me with the scale, help me with the scale. So when you're looking at the model, uh, you need to look for a piece that you know you can actually put on your face. So let's just click this piece right here. Um, I just literally print out that and then lay it over my face to see how big it fits, to see how the piece will look if it's final. So if it looks huge, obviously going to be huge. You can also just mock up the front faceplate. Just take some tape, mock it up, and see how big the actual faceplate is going to be totally. Um, but you can also use that point-to-point -point measuring tool and say measure on the nose. Oops, it still had a stick. Measure on the nose, down the bottom and it'll give you whatever, what your number is for that, and you can just measure your face and say, oh yeah, it's going to fit below my chin, capture whatever it needs to, um, and that's the same thing for the width, but I usually find a piece that is a large enough that you can just print out those two pages, do like a test fit together before you actually start sticking it to foam. I also get rid of the pieces I know I'm not going to use. So like this eye cover right here, all I did was take some, it's literally some mesh, see-through mesh. So instead of having it blocked out, uh, I remove that piece and all you got to do is drop it off the grid. And that piece is no longer on there for printing. Um, and that's the same thing with the other side of the helmet. So whatever duplicates I had, I just move them off the page. Um, I also did, there's a small piece on the inside of this eye right here. I didn't really want to try to fit that in there, especially with the glue. Um, it's as far as the angle and what it was. So I took that off also too. It actually opened the eye hole up a little bit more versus the game model, but you've seen the helmet. The other thing to look at, whenever you're looking at this stuff, you know after you print it out and you start cutting it out, a couple of things to look for. This circle right here is not a circle. It's a stop sign looking thing right now. So needless to say, when you cut this out, cut it out as a circle. So go along the outside and make it the way it's supposed to. Same thing with this piece right here. That is supposed to be a circle. So don't cut the edges and make it look like a computer program. Cut it like a circle. So use it as a guide so you know where it needs to be straight. You do have your reference pictures, so you can always go to the reference pictures and see what they're supposed to look like. Um, the other thing is, all the extra stuff, there's been people that always, when, when they first get a hold of JF stuff, they're like, oh, you need to get rid of all this extra stuff because it's foam. Uh, no, you don't. You need to keep that because every, all this stuff right here is where it overlaps. So I'm clicking on this piece right here. See how it's sitting right there? So this piece is now on top of that piece. And so it gives you the extra edge to actually sit it on top of that. That's why those are there. So don't cut them off. Whatever you see, definitely try to cut them to the best of your ability. So that way everything is going to overlap. And that's the same thing with like the giant pieces that you see right here. That is going to have the face plate sitting on top of it. And if you actually click on it, you can tell it'll give you a link. And it'll show you where it's actually hitting at. So you can see that it's up there. So that's all my little stuff that I usually see and toy with. I do condense all these down to as many pages as I can. Um, for the funky looking ones, sometimes what I try to do before I even hit that print button, I want to make sure the if I align them up, I want something solid straight through. So I don't want it sitting on like right on the V because I don't want it to capture it wrong. That's the same thing with these pieces. Um, usually I don't try to place them right in the center. I try to offset them so that way when I put them together and I fold them together, I know if it's symmetrical. I'm not going to be missing the center piece of it or it might be shortened just because I laid it out like that. Same thing with this. I don't like them sitting in the V's. So usually I have, try to move it to one of the arms, hit right there. So no V, no V, it's all solid. 
Um, print them out, tape them together, and those are going to be your templates. So that's just step one, and then we get to go to the foam cutting, all that fun stuff. And I'm going to post a little bit of a time, so I will keep running with it.